Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to my August wrap up. Today I have four, five-ish books to talk about and I actually thought it was less, so good job me. <laughs> I'd say let's just get right into it and start talking about the first book that I finished in August, which is Thunderhead by Neil Shusterman. I would like to receive an applause. Thank you, thank you for actually starting a sequel to a series that I started reading this year. I never do that. <laughs> this is the sequel to Scythe, which I read in preparation for Yelp, and I had Scythe on my TBR for years and years, but I never picked it up. Story of my life. <laughs> I will tell you quickly what Scythe is about and then I will give you like my non-spoilery thoughts on the sequel. So in Scythe, we follow Citra and Rowan who are going to be apprentice Scythes. And basically in the world that they're living in, no one like naturally dies, which is first of all, super interesting in and of itself because so many weird situations come forth out of that premise. Basically, they're gonna get introduced into the scythedom, but they both have to kind of like fight for that title. Only one of them will become a scythe officially. And the person who doesn't will have to be gleaned by the other, which is a very interesting premise. And I love learning about this world and it's actually one of my favorite reads of 2022. A bit of a spoiler for my favorite reads video at the end of the year. <laughs> and then at Yelk itself, I got this one for a really good price. And actually I was like, Sabine, you gotta get your shit together right now and start reading sequels and not feel like intimidated, of course, also by the size because this book is like over 500 pages. And I kind of feel like I have defeated my fear of big books this year because I kind of like easily, like without any worry, pick up a 500 page book. I'm like, yeah, that's huge. but. I could do it, you know, I'm, I found that confidence in myself. <laughs> Some of my friends kind of told me that Scythe by itself could already be like a complete standalone and the sequel is not really worth your time. And on the first thing, I definitely agree, Scythe can be read as a standalone. It has quite like an open ending, but like in a nice way. All of the possibilities are there, but just something in me still wanted to pick up Thunderhead and kind of just like see where um, Neil Schusterman was gonna take the story next. And honestly, the like separate roles kind of that Citra and Rowan had in the sequel, I really, really liked. Like, I'm not gonna tell you what because spoilers, but also because book one had kind of like such an open ending, the plot or like the direction of Thunderhead was really quite unsure for me, which I don't know if I'm a fan of that. I like to kind of like know where the story is going, but that does also lead to great plot twists. And I do think that Neil Schusterman is great with his plot twists. Overall, I do feel like Thunderhead is actually worth giving a try maybe just to be sure do not buy book three before you like get halfway through thunderhead because there is kind of like the plot went into a little bit of a different direction halfway through and i enjoyed that a little less so the first half of this book was like a solid i think like four to a four and a half stars for me but then the other half was like a three and a half <laughs> i'd give it a four out of five stars i mean the ending of thunderhead was phenomenal and definitely left off on a cliffhanger. So I really want to read The Toll in the next upcoming months. That is an even bigger tome of a book. I believe it's like over 600 pages. So yeah, I think I will do it, but it, I will just take it slowly. It, it's gonna take me some time. <laughs> then I read a book that everyone and their mama, well, that that's kind of maybe a weird thing to say with this book. But a book that like a lot of people read during the month of August is I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. And I listened to this on audiobook. The audiobook was absolutely phenomenal because Jeanette McCurdy herself narrated it. And she just, wow, the emotions sometimes in her voice really made me emotional too. If you've been living under a rock and you don't know what this book is about, it is about um, Jeanette McCurdy's life, basically starting from her childhood acting jobs until almost like a couple of years ago. And she has like been dealing with some shit, <laughs> actually like a lot of shit. I don't know how one person can sustain that much trauma. So there are definitely a lot of like trigger warnings for this book. There's a lot of talk about eating disorders, alcohol abuse, and definitely like abusive relationships with basically all of her family members like i mean the focus is really there on the relationship between her and her mom but her dad is also kind of like absent sometimes her grandparents especially her grandma like they said some really 
really triggering and worrying shit to her. And she also had some weird relationships with boys. I mean, one of them got a psychosis and thought he was the reincarnation of Jesus. So that's, yeah, that's pretty intense. <laughs> I grew up with iCarly, like I think most of you guys, and just knowing how much shit went on behind the scenes, like not only at like the set of Nickelodeon and like so many boundaries were crossed and was just like not okay. But the main focus is definitely on her mother and how she basically wanted Jeanette to live out her dream. And she is super manipulative. She basically talked Jeanette into an eating disorder. It has made a lasting impression on me. And it definitely also deals with when your parent dies, like for instance, Jeanette mom, a lot of people want you to like talk fondly of the dead. Like nothing was wrong with them. They were the absolute perfect human being, but that really like undermines the trauma that Jeanette went through. And I really liked how she explored that whole topic in her book and did not like downgrade the trauma that her mother put on her. I'm not gonna give this book a rating because it's like a really, really personal story, but I do think it's like a fantastic read if you can handle these intense topics. So yeah, definitely check out the audiobook. I wanted to move on to something a little bit more light and you all know that I discovered Emily Henry this past year. I am a huge Emily Henry stan. And because I also work at a bookstore, I constantly get like confronted with all of these amazing titles that I wanna add to my TBR. And I have been seeing this book called Every Summer After by Carly Fortune like pop up everywhere. And just like the cover really spoke to me. I know we shouldn't judge books by their covers, but I mean, come on, we all do that. And it just gave off such amazing summer romance vibes. I already don't remember our main character's name. So I'm just gonna refer to her as our main character. She goes to this like really cute lake house that her parents bought every single summer. And basically she meets um, two brothers there that are living like, I think, next to her or like across from her from the lake and they start hanging out every summer. And this book is a second chance romance. So she gets into like a romance with one of the brothers, but something happened and they never talked to each other again, like 17 or what was it? Like 13 summers ago. But now that the boys, their mother passed away, our main character is going back to the lake house, going to the funeral and she's really being confronted with the brothers and like their past. And you get all these like flashbacks of like the previous summers versus the now and you're kind of like building up towards that like big moment as to like why they're not speaking anymore. The setting and like those lake house summary vibes were like 11 out of 10. It was fantastic. I love that so, so much. And I really enjoyed working up towards the big reveal. But whilst we were working up towards it, I had major suspicions about like what the big thing was that was gonna be revealed. And I was disappointed when that actually came true. <laughs> You know, like a second chance romance, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but like a second chance romance is all about forgiveness. And maybe even in this situation, you would be able to forget what happened with our main character and just like that whole situation. But I wanted that to be worked out much more properly because I felt like, I think the book was like, 300 pages and I felt like there was like an almost 250 page buildup towards this moment. And that bad thing that happened was like worked out within the last 50 to 100 pages. And I don't think that the author or just like how it was worked out was done properly. If I was the love interest, I wouldn't be able to forgive her, I think. There was just such like bad communication about the whole situation and it just made me feel icky. So. <laughs> I had super mixed feelings about this book because I loved how comfortable the whole lake setting felt and just like these two boys, these two brothers and their mother like welcoming her into her family, her working at their family restaurant. It just felt so absolutely wonderful, but just like, no. <laughs> So I think in the end, I gave it like a three to a three and a half out of five stars because for the majority of it, I really enjoyed it. But just like the reveal and how that was like dealt with was just quite like a, a, a big no for me. The last book that I finished in August was Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I made a whole dedicated reading vlog to that book. So I will like point out here so you guys can watch it. I think this is a book that we have all been waiting for, especially like us Taylor Jenkins Reid fans. To summarize my reading experience and not really go into depth with my thoughts because I won't, you know, tell that to you guys in the reading vlog. It was not what I hoped it was gonna be. And after I uploaded my vlog, some of my friends also pointed out some articles that I should read about how the representation of Carrie Soto is not that great because Taylor Jenkins Reid is a white woman herself and Carrie Soto is a Latin American woman. I don't recall like from which country her like father came. So I'm sorry about that. 
That's my fleeting memory. So the representation in Kerry Soto is definitely questionable. I will leave some articles in the description box down below, but I wasn't like fully aware of that when I read the book. So thank you so much to my friends for pointing that out to me. But besides that rep not being great, I also didn't love the storyline. So I think in the end, I gave it like a three and a half out of five stars, but I rounded it down to a three. Not that great, not that great. I definitely prefer Taylor Jenkins Reads other books. So those are the books that I actually finished, but on the 31st of August, I also started reading The Society for Soulless Girls by Laura Steven. This was also one of my most like highly anticipated releases of 2022, but I am making like a dark academia or just like fall reading vlog because guys, it's September and I am a basic bitch booktuber too. I am loving these autumnal vlogs and autumnal vibes. In the past, I didn't actually love autumn, but because of the whole book community, just like hyping up this season and making the most wonderful and cozy content. It's just, it's it's great being in autumn. <laughs> I will leave some of my favorite videos here that I think you should absolutely check out. Some of my friends make these wonderful like vlogs and fall recommendations. Definitely check them out and appreciate their wonderful content. I finished this book yesterday. It's mid-September, so I won't tell you my thoughts on it, but Let's, let's not talk about this book right now. <laughs> I am very excited to be filming my witchy bitch autumnal TBR <laughs> video very soon. So keep an eye out for that. I know we're already midway into September, but fall slash autumn hasn't officially started yet. I know we all want to pretend that it has, but it hasn't. So I'm not late with my TBR. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know if you've read any of the books that I talked about in today's video. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below and hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.